Hustlers Paul and Alex have hired a nice shiny silver car. But it's not because they fancy going for a spin. In fact, they're going to use it to demonstrate a scam that is catching out unwary car buyers across the country. They start off by changing the number plates to fake ones and removing any hire company stickers from the car and the key ring. They don't want to leave any evidence that could lead back to them after this scam has finished. Because this scam is going to leave a lot of people feeling very angry indeed. This is the hire car scam. The guys drop off the car at an empty house they have taken over for this scam. They have put an advert in the paper offering this 12 grand car for £7,500. They're hoping to tempt their mark with the promise of a bargain. Jess is going to be running the hustle. She's playing a young mum who's been dropped in at the deep end. She's brought a box of toys and Alex has left the child's bike in the drive. These props will come into play later. Alex and Paul have done their part for now, and they promptly leave. Someone has arrived to look at the massively underpriced car. We have a mark. Now, you may be thinking that it's impossible for the hustlers to actually sell this motor. After all, they don't have any of the ownership documents, and won't the hire company miss it after a couple of days? Just how does this hustle work? Let's watch it unfold. Hello, Hi. Hi. Uh, my name's Dave. I can see you about the car. Oh, right, yeah. Hi, Hi. I'm Jane. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I'll tell you what, let's go pop, get the keys. I'll okay. be out in a second. Yeah. Okay, do you want to have a, have a look? Firstly, as Jess goes inside to get the keys, she grabs a baby monitor from the sofa. Remember the box of toys? The bike Alex left outside? These props are being used to set the scene. A young mum, home alone with a child. She can't possibly be a hustler, <laughs> right? Nice car, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's lovely. How long have you had it? Um, well, it's my husband. He got it um, September last year, okay. so not very long. Next, Jess mentions a fictional husband, but he isn't around, so where is he? All is about to become clear. The, uh, the document, have you? I haven't actually got any documents with me because my husband's getting a new tax uh, disc this morning. He's got everything with him in his briefcase. So that's why the whole day's been messed up, really, because he's been called into work. I've got the little one with me. So the fictional husband's not around because he's gone to pay the road tax. And with the vehicle documents in his possession, the mark has no way of discovering the truth about the hire car. All he can do is take a word for it. The ruse is set. Now is the time for Jess to strike. But we do have um, a few more people coming this afternoon. And because, you know, we're wanting a quick sale, basically, yeah. it's a great deal. It will go this afternoon sometime. Um, but if you are genuinely interested, what I can do is if you give me maybe a small deposit, say 250, um, I can't sell the rest of the people this afternoon. Because you do sound, you know, interested. Yeah, yeah. So that's her game. Instead of selling the car, Jess intends to take a deposit on it. Actually, she intends to take as many deposits as she can before the day is out. Jess takes him into the house to take his deposit. That's for you anyway. Great, thank you very much. She hands over a worthless receipt, and that's 250 quid in the kitty. Mark number two arrives, and Jess gives him the same spiel. It's not, it's cheap, isn't it? Why is it so cheap? Uh, because we're, we're just wanting a quick sale. My husband's got a company car now, and I've... And it works. Again, the bargain price entices him into leaving a deposit. Uh, 100, did you say? Yeah, 100. Jesse's total is now £350. The third mark okay. is also keen. All right, if I leave the deposit today, when could I pick it up? Obviously, I named Depp's to talk to your husband. And leaves another 100 to secure the car for himself until 6 o'clock. £100 there. Jess now has £450. Our fourth mark ups the ante and hands over £300. Um, 300 did you say, yeah? Yeah, 300 Bringing the total to £750. Um, yeah, so I'll write you out a receipt anyway. And mark number five gives her all the cash she has on her, £260. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jess has taken over a grand now. Yeah. I'll see you at 6 o'clock, yeah? Absolutely, yeah. Lovely. All the marks have been told to come back at 6pm to complete the transaction. 
but the hustlers have no intention of hanging around to meet them. They're off quick sharp to count their cash and give back the hire car. The price of the car is so attractive that you just can't resist. It's such a nice looking car for that amount of money. How can you not pay a deposit? It's the greed factor, isn't it? It is. You're, getting, you, you're putting the mark onto a position where he thinks he's ripping you off because he's getting such a cheap deal. So what happened to our marks when they turned up that evening to seal the deal? By the time they all turned up at 6 o'clock when I told them to return, me, the money and the car were all long gone. Somebody at some point in a scam will push a time element on you. Mm. They'll say, oh, well, you need to leave the money now because it might go later. If you start hearing all that stuff and yet you don't have the physical evidence in front of you that the car is genuine, be very wary. Be very wary. No, no, I didn't think anything at all. I mean, to be honest, when, the, when Jane opened the door and I saw her, she's a lovely looking girl. The first thing I thought was, fool, you know. And I suppose that did kind of, if it had been like a big 12 stone gorilla there, or 12 stone, 20 stone gorilla, maybe I wouldn't have handed over the 100 pounds so easily. 